Hi, this is Gary Rosenzweig from Flash Game University, FlashGameU.com. Today I've got a tutorial based on two questions that have been asked of me in the last few weeks. Both were about very different types of games, but both had one thing in common. They relied on an inventory system. So inventory systems where you pick up objects during a game, either by clicking on them on the screen or running into them using your character. Uh, so let's build a simple inventory system just to demonstrate how that can be done. Now I've created here a basic movie here called Inventory Demo. And in it I've placed no code. I've only placed four different movie clips and I've named them Box 1 through Box 4. And they're actually four different items in the library. So they would represent objects you would pick up in the game. Then I don't really have any code here but I do set the document class to Inventory Demo. Inventory Demo is going to be a very simple movie uh, document class that I'll just paste in here. Um, basically what it's going to do is it's going to uh, just run and just run two lines of code. The first is going to create an inventory object which is going to be where our main set of code is. So we're going to have a separate object that deals just with the inventory. And we're going to store that in a variable here uh, of type inventory. And what we're, the only thing we're going to do with this inventory is we're going to make one call to it. We're going to call make inventory items, which is going to be a routine in there that's going to we're going to pass in the four items that are on the screen. So we're going to use the names of those objects. So box one through box four, and we're going to pass that in inside of an array. An array is great for doing this because you can pass in two items, four items, a hundred items, whatever. Um, and we pass them in and make inventory items. The idea is we're going to make those objects items that can be clicked on and added to the inventory. So this really just does a little bit of setup. The actual work is done in the inventory.as, which is also blank. I'm going to copy and paste some code into there. So to start off with, let's go ahead and look here. Uh, we declare you know, the basics here, display and events. Um, we're going to have two properties of the inventory. Uh, items in the inventory, which is going to be an array, and it's just going to hold uh, basically a list of objects that are in the inventory. Then we're also going to create uh, inventory sprite. So the idea is that this inventory object is not only going to act as the, the code that you can add inventory items to and it can handle inventory, but it will also create a visible sprite that will actually be on the screen. Now the constructor function, which I also have prepared, uh, basically uh, takes uh, a movie clip, the parent movie clip. So what happens uh, typically in a Flash movie is you uh, run the document class like this and you say inventory equals new inventory and you want to create something on the screen but uh, inventory isn't actually a display object of any kind. You can say it's public class inventory. It doesn't extend movie clip or extend sprite. It's not actually attached to something. So instead we're going to create something completely new. We'll do that when you get a reference to the stage basically, to the root of the movie and we need to pass that in because uh, the inventory object knows nothing about that. So inventory demo is going to pass in this which in this case is the document or root. We're going to get that as parent movie clip, parent MC. Um, now we're going to set the array uh, items in inventory to nothing. Just get that started. We're going to create a new sprite and we're going to set it at about a little over from the left and at the bottom of the screen and that will be the upper left hand corner of the inventory list. Then we're going to use that parent MC reference there to add child to it and add that inventory sprite. So now inventory sprite is on the screen and we don't have to deal with the parent MC again. We're not even saving it. It's just temporary for the constructor function. We can deal with inventory sprite directly and add objects to it. So let's go and take a look at that make inventory items array uh, function. We're going to pass in an array of items and it's going to be an array of basically movie clips that are on the screen. We're going to go ahead and loop through this array and we're going to do two things to every single one. First is we're going to take care of adding a mouse event listener to it. So we're going to listen for click on these events. Now, now of course if you've got a character running around the screen you're going to do this in a different way. But for demonstration purposes for inventory we're going to basically enable each of these objects to be clicked on and added to the inventory. And we're going to call get item when that happens. We're also going to set the button mode to true so the cursor changes to a finger when it's over these objects. Now at this point we've got something pretty complete except that we don't have uh, the get item function. So let's go and add that but keep it empty right now. Oh, There we go. Just a simple get item. So now if we run the movie 
we're going to get those objects that are just sitting there and you can see that indeed they have been made to button mode true because I can roll over them and if I click on them I basically get an error right here because uh, I'm generating the event to call get item. So my test here was to see that we are calling get item when we click on it and indeed we are. Now let's complete get item. So uh, what get item is going to get every time is going to get an event uh, and the event will basically tell us what item was clicked on. Let me go and copy and paste the code for this as well just to save time. So we get the event and the first thing we want to do is to figure out what item was clicked on. So that's a e current e dot current target or the event current target. We cast it as a movie clip because uh, get item has no idea what this event is passing to it. So we're going to tell it no it's always going to be a movie clip don't worry about it and we're going to store that in a temporary variable called item. Great, then we can add to the array items in inventory item. Great, we're also going to add it to the, uh, to the sprite we've created, the inventory sprite. Since item is actually a visible object, uh, we can add the same thing to the array and to the sprite. And we're going to set its locations. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, oh, uh, how many items are in the inventory now? Subtract 1 from it, so in other words, start at 0, and multiply that by 40. Since all these boxes that we've created on the screen are 30 by 30, uh, space them 40 ac across will. Uh, create a nice little list. And we're going to set it uh, the y at 0. We don't have to do that, but if you wanted to change that, it's here for you. Then we're going to go ahead and remove the event listener. So removing this event listener uh, basically means that you can no longer add it to the inventory. It's already in the inventory. And we're going to add a new event listener for using the item. Let's comment that out right now. Now notice one thing I didn't do is remove it from the screen. I don't have to because using add child will actually remove it from where it is currently. There's only one object. You don't create a duplicate when you do add child. So add child will remove it from the stage and will put it inside the inventory sprite. So now what happens when we run? We click here and there we go. It adds it to this sprite down below. We click on the next one, the next one, and the next one. And adds each item there. And there's there still have the button mode set to true, but nothing happens if you click on them. So we'll change that by enabling this new event and we'll do a simple demonstration here for the sake of this podcast of use item. So basically you click again on it after it's been added to the inventory and it's going to call use item. It gets the item in the same way and we're just going to do a trace here that's just going to basically say hey uh, you clicked on this item in the inventory. So now if we run it we click here it adds it to the inventory. We click again and we get use item box 3. And we can add all the items here to the inventory and we can click to use the different items. So you would put code there that actually does things, uh, unlocks doors, uh, does magic, whatever it is that the item is going to need. And of course if at that point you want to remove the item from the, uh, from the inventory you could do that. You could go ahead and loop through the uh, items in inventory array, find it and remove it. Also remove it, just remove child from the sprite and that gets rid of it completely so you can remove items that way. You can also use this items and in inventory array to check if multiple items are present. So for instance if in order to go through a certain door you need two different keys uh, you can loop through this. You can ca call a new function here and check to see say if key 1 and key 5 are both present um, then you can go ahead and allow the door to be open. So that's basically how you set up a, a simple inventory system inside of your game using a separate inventory object. Uh, I'll post all the code as usual to flashgameview.com. If you're watching this on another website, uh, keep in mind that the full resolution version of this and the source code are all available at flashgameview.com. Thanks a lot. This is Gary Rosenzweig with Flash Game University.